Hello and welcome to my channel, Ruckasaurus Rex, where we discuss and review all things dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. It's been a minute since I've uh, uploaded any content. That's because I haven't had anything to upload that's new. And uh, I really didn't feel like uh, going into the archive. So I said, I'll just be patient. It's all good. And uh, just uh, concentrated on my other channel. Uh, so um, I'm back because, as you can see, I now have product. And uh, as you guys know, um, with uh, Beasts of the Mesozoic, which is what we're looking at right here, I have, by my own admission, arrived late to the party. But I have arrived at the party, and uh, we're going to keep it going with the Ceratopsian series. And uh, what we have here is the Cosmoceratops, Richard Sony. So I'm, of course, happy about that. Very excited about uh, joining, uh, jumping into this particular rabbit hole. Uh, I've been very excited with the uh, my first three. Uh, Beast of the Mesozoic and uh, the joy continues anyway enough of uh, me uh, just uh, gushing over uh, these action figures let's get it started we're looking at the Cosmoceratops in the packaging you can see uh, it's the uh, standard packaging for uh, BOTM we've got the sleeve there with some nice artwork of the Cosmoceratops a pair of them as a matter of fact pretty nice on the side we have the uh, emblem the the slogan the uh, icon of a triceratops beast of the mesozoic ceratopsian series on 18th scale dinosaur action figures we turn to the back and we do have that sleeve and uh, it reads Cosmoceratops Richard Sony, which means ornamented horned face. Cosmoceratops is number 15 in the Wave 2 checklist. And uh, it, it actually is way, it's actually number 15 overall, but it's number it's number 15 overall in how many Ceratopsians they've put out from the entire series. But this is part of the Wave 2, just so we can be clear on that. We've got a collectible card inside, which is what the uh, that artwork is uh, emulating. The card will look just like that. And our little info uh, below reads uh, things like the length of the uh, Cosmoceratops is up to 4.5 meters, which equates to 15 feet long. It uh, is from Utah at the Kai Parowitz Formation. The time period when it existed was in the late Cretaceous, about 76.4 million years ago. A close relative of Scyplipius, Cosmoceratops, has one of the most unique Ceratopsian skulls with its short fill, outward pointing brow horns, and downward curving frill horns. This distinct look is thought to have evolved due to an isolated life on the island of La Meridia. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting. And, uh, when I was uh, deciding which which uh, figures I'm gonna get, I went on and um, picked up two, and uh, I, was, I picked up one that was relatively more expensive and one that was, uh, you know, in the lower range of money. And so, you know, I'm gonna end up getting them all, but it was just hard deciding. And then I was like, you know what, the Cosmoceratops does have the uh, the really nice looking skull, which is the uh, highlight of all these Ceratopsians. So I said, yeah, let me get Cosmoceratops. So that's what I did. And uh, you've got uh, the top of that sleeve, 19 points of articulation. This critter has realistic movement and detail. And of course the profile card is included. So what we will do is get our Cosmoceratops out of the packaging. All the beasts of the Mesozoic come with backdrops, and I just uh, wanted to show you this one. Um, it's showing uh, night sky, um, which is uh, nice, but the uh, the real thing is what they have there at the bottom, which you don't really get to see, and that's the landscape down below. So, uh, it's still pretty nice. And as previously stated, all beasts of the Mesozoic come with a card it shows the same artwork that we see uh, on the sleeves and on the back 
there's a uh, well it's not really on the back it's a leaflet that that shows of um, how you can uh, apply the tail you guys already know that uh, the tails on the ceratopsians come separate already apart and uh, you've got to snap them on some of them are tight and uh, the easiest way to do that is to utilize heat so this shows you how to do that and here we have our cosmoceratops out of the packaging tail connected you guys already know that uh, the tail comes separate and we've already demonstrated how to put it on so I will no longer bore you with that particular segment anymore so uh, when we go from out of the package to uh, displaying the figure it will already be uh, connected up so there we go so uh, yeah so looking at him he's looking very very nice we're going to uh, start off by uh, getting a measurement with uh, him and yes he is he's coming in at uh, about ten and a quarter inches long 118 scale if you do the calculations that puts him right there right there at 118 it comes out he, he does uh, represent a 15 foot long animal just slightly over about like 15.3 I would think something like that but anyway looking pretty good so uh, now that we've taken that measurement let's get an, an all-around look at him so here we have our cosmoceratops uh, going on our uh, rotating platter you can see uh, all around very nice coloring uh, very nice uh, paint and uh, yeah he's looking uh, really good there so uh, now that he's uh, stunned you guys going around and round uh, we're going to take him off and uh, take a close look at him so now we're looking closer up at the skull of our Cosmoceratops uh, as far as the coloration for the Cosmo it's uh, based off of the uh, red-eyed crocodile skink um, creative beasts always uh, they always uh, base their uh, their their uh, models their their figures excuse me off of uh, existing reptiles and amphibians and then of course they uh, you know they customize it they they give it a personal touch there so yeah the crocodile skink the red-eyed crocodile uh, skink so um, yeah there we have it but let's take a uh, closer look at this this uh, this skull here I'll turn the figure so we can uh, get a nice look and uh, it is something to behold that's why I chose this one now because it had um, at the time with all the selections I had the most impressive skull and frill so I went with that and then of course the colors uh, didn't hurt either so yeah so that's pretty cool you see the uh, the uh, the brow horns they come out and they flare out he's got like a stubby nasal horn there um, a little bit uh, more going on it's like you got the horn but it still like continues on till it gets to the uh, edge of the beak and then he's got uh, horns on his cheeks over here so you got that and then of course the frill is adorned with spikes and then when you get to the top they they flap over so it's pretty nice as far as the paint goes start with that eye the eye is painted uh, like a yellow with black pupils and then you've got the beak that's look that looks very nice there and uh, you see that it's a uh, it's like a red base with the skull and you got black highlights and got uh, different shades of red and yellows in there the texture look at the texture on the jaws are looking pretty nice the area around the eyes surrounding the eyes is red uh, with the uh, the back of them they have a uh, like a white perimeter the horns painted with a uh, bony texture uh, dark at the base and then they flail out with a, like a bone colored brownish tan and the uh, the frill horns or spikes they come off of the frill dark and as they flap down you see that they they get that uh, bone like color has a nice wash all of the uh, spikes along the frill has got that it's pretty nice pretty nice and you've got uh, the scalation along the neck getting to the back of the creature 
it's a, like a, a starts off like a black almost like a charcoal gray but it's a little bit darker than that and uh, you can see all the the bumps osteoderms and everything like that the back of the frill if you can see there's really nothing special there but it, it does have color too it's not just black it's like it's got a brown wash in there if you can kind of sort of see that and uh, the neck going down you got the wrinkles the scales you got that rust colored brown or red down in there tan for the the bottom of the throat and the underbelly with some it looks like pinks maybe a mauve if you will got that with the the belly over here you've got uh, blacks with some like reddish striping the legs the forearms red with the black striping and uh, then it changes color to a tannish and you see the the uh, the dry brushing that's going over that so that's pretty cool and then in the back the hind legs dark got the uh, red going on and once again nice scalation the uh, the toes on the uh, the feet accurate and of course they're painted light color paint which is cool different contrast because this is a dark colored uh, uh, figure animal and uh, then with the tail it's black but the undersides has got that light and red uh, spots there and uh, yeah the top you see it's kind of uh, right down the middle it's darker than when you go when you flare out to the, uh, the the opposite ends of the body there same thing with the tail it uh, it's dark right dead center and then it uh, lightens up some almost like a blue I don't know if that's translating well on the camera but to me it's almost bluish so uh, yeah then you flip it and you get the same things on the other side pretty nice pretty nice very nice so uh, yeah that's the coloration on our Cosmoceratops as far as articulation because these are action figures 19 points of articulation we'll start here at the skull again we've got jaw articulation so our Cosmo can open its mouth that far or in fact since we're here let's see if we can see anything in that mouth this they uh, Creative Beast, they, they do paint the insides of the mouth, but because these are Ceratopsians and you can't really see too much in there, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to see what's going on in there. Maybe you could see what's going on up top there, I'm not too sure. But uh, rest assured, you could see that, the, the well, the front of the beak, toothless, and there are teeth grinders uh, that start at the back. So yeah, you got that, but anyway, the mouth, is articulated he's got articulation in the neck here as you can see he can go left right up and down and then the neck itself can move left or right and you get some some help with that to go down the body you can go left right kind of and a little up and down too just to give it some slight you know some slight uh, uh, advantages for posing the forelimbs can go forward back they flail out somewhat can I get it to do it they do spread a little bit they do flail out and uh, you have articulation at the elbow we'll call it and then with the feet you can go down and flail it up it goes round and round and it does have pivot the rear leg the hind leg can flail out a bit too not much but some you've got articulation at that knee and then at that second joint down below you've got that and then of course the feet do the same thing as the feet in the front you've got pivot you can point down up and rotate and then the tail of course because it's on a ball joint you've got that goes up down side to side and if you want to and I don't know why you could spin it so there's see what I could do here oh yeah there's our Cosmoceratops in all its glory here we have our Cosmoceratops rearing up and uh, this uh, just uh, makes me um, more excited I can't wait and it's gonna happen uh, I believe uh, sometime next year early next year when uh, the wave 
two of the Tyrannosaur series comes out. At least I believe the uh, Teratophonius is in wave two. Um, might be in wave three, which is later next year, but uh, that's the uh, Tyrannosaur that was uh, present and existing alongside Cosmoceratops. So it'll be great to get that figure and match them up together. And here's another pose where I've got uh, the legs splayed out and the head down as though it were drinking some water. And apologies that I don't have any uh, props or anything like that to uh, enhance the posing. I uh, used the props for other types of displays and I haven't been able to get replacements. So uh, it's going to be kind of plain and blasé for the next few vids until I actually get the props that I want to get. You know, something that looks kind of, you know, natural. Um, what I really want to do is get some type of natural diorama commissioned, but uh, that's well off into the future. Here's another pose just because I have fun with these guys. Now comparing with uh, other uh, Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsians, here we have a juvenile Centrosaurus. So uh, you can see um, that uh, it's, it's indeed a juvenile because Centrosaurus grew larger than Cosmos uh, Ceratops by about four or five feet. And here's to illustrate the point here, we've got Big Mama herself, the adult Centrosaurus. You can see the size difference. It's uh, it's crazy. Um, I think that uh, I'm not uh, really sure. I've, I've forgotten already, but I think um, that uh, the adult Centrosaurus might be slightly oversized. Um, I think, yeah, I think the measurements have this coming in at like 23 feet, maybe. I could be wrong, but I believe she's slightly oversized. But be that as it may, you can definitely see the size difference. And last, but certainly never least, because it was the first Beast of the Mesozoic dino I ever reviewed, we've got the Aniosaurus. And uh, you can see the, uh, the slight size difference between the two of them. Aniosaurus is in scale, and uh, it's a little bit smaller than uh, 15 feet. Um, what's thrown off is... Uh, the Cosmoceratops is a little taller and uh, bulkier, and then of course there's that uh, the uh, the crazy head sculpt. You know, the skull is the uh, is uh, the big difference. Uh, Aniosaurus also has a very impressive skull with the frill and everything else. Very nice. I love me some frill dinosaurs. So as you can see, I'm, I've tried to uh, fit our Cosmo in the uh, backdrop that came with it, and. Uh, it's uh, problematic at best, let's just say that, but uh, it, you get the idea. It still looks pretty good. You'll have to uh, be creative to try to get it, um, you know, in there without seeing um, where the folds are and things of that nature, but it's still pretty nice. I love the, uh, you know, with the stars and everything like that, so pretty nice. In summary, in closing, this uh, is another beautiful figure from Beast of the Mesozoic, the Ceratopsian line. This is uh, wave two of the Ceratopsian series, and uh, Cosmo is number 15 in the line. Beautiful colors, very nice. That frill, as always, the skull is the highlight when you're talking about Ceratopsian horned frill dinosaurs, and the Cosmoceratops definitely has uh, one of the more impressive frills in uh, the uh, the line, we'll call it the species, the the genus. Um, very nice articulation is pretty decent. You know what I'm saying? You get to actually pose instead of uh, just static models. It's uh, very nice. The accuracy is top notch. David Silva, I believe, that's his name. Yes, David Silva uh, d is definitely dedicated to accuracy, and he. He does deliver Beast of the Mesozoic, Creative Beasts, excellent line, and I will be getting more Ceratopsians, and uh, I'm awaiting the arrival of my uh, one eighteenth scale Raptors and uh, small Ceratopsians like Protoceratops, and uh, of course I'm awaiting the arrival of my one eighteenth scale 
super large, I believe it's 27 inches long, Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is the first offering from Beast of the Mesozoic, uh, the Tyrannosaurus series. They've already released their gray versions, both the 1 18th and 1 35th scale, but I can't paint, so I'm not about to try my hand at that. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, very young channel, and uh, we you know, we're going to move slow, but we're still going to move. So um, I appreciate all the help. Uh, leave comments below. And of course, if you want to be notified when I uh, upload another video, please hit that bell and you will be notified. So uh, that'll do it on uh, behalf of our Cosmoceratops and the channel Recosaurus Rex. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.